is Scotty. It's been a while since you guys saw her, I think. She's just seen herself in the camera. Or maybe it hasn't been a while, because I remember her seeing herself in the camera before. Here's that dog. Here's my beautiful baby. And she's getting really big, aren't you? We're taking her for a haircut in a couple of weeks, so she'll look much more handsome soon. She's molting so much because of that long hair. I still can't get over my hair, I love it. Um, so how have you all been? I'm really well. I'm back after, I think I only made a video last week, but I decided to come back already because I have a lot of haul to show you. Um, I'll get to the haul in a minute. I'll do a little, a really quick progress update first. I have been working on Sarah Brazier and I did finish the second row of pages. And there you go. That's where we are so far. Um, this is 14 pages of progress, by the way. I just wanted to show you before I scroll the fabric up. The fabric looks gorgeous there, doesn't it? That's what the fabric looks like. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, what to say about this? It's really funny how um, non-symmetrical it is. I'm going to roll on your tail. Um, like if you look at that centre part, you can see there's a big gap on one side of the vase and a little gap on the other. The birds are different colours. The flower isn't lined up with the basket above it. Um, just every single thing in this sampler is asymmetrical and it's just so funny and quaint and it's really nice to stitch on. The 46 count fabric is um, actually a lot of fun. It's easy to use. Oh, this is upside down. Sorry. Ow! I whacked my finger on the corner of the table and it really hurt. Ow! Okay, the 46 count fabric is um, really good. The coverage with one strand is excellent. Um, I hope that's not blurry for you. I don't know if you can see it. Um, the satin stitch, I'm only using one strand for the satin stitch. I'm using DMC, not silks. Um, because I'm cheap. I'm using one strand for the satin stitch, so it, you know the coverage is not perfect. I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah, the coverage isn't perfect. I did consider using two strands, but I think it looks good enough, especially if you're back here. It looks fine. So I love it. I'm very happy with it. Um, so there we go. That's. I'm going to scroll this up now um, and start working on the next row of pages, which will be 15 to 21. That's 35 pages in the whole design. So on the next row, I'll start working on the big heart in the middle, the deer. So that'll be fun. Um, so I finished that. I finished it yesterday. I said I was going to finish it by Wednesday, but I didn't. I didn't even stitch for like two or three days this week. Just a busy week with work and looking after mum's shop. Mum is back tomorrow. Yes. So I'm done with the shop now. I just, I just got back from the shop now. I've packaged up the last 14 orders or something. So... Mum can take care of it from here on out. Um, so I finished this yesterday. So since yesterday, I've been working on Bella Butterfly. Here she is. Let me take this grind guard off. Hopefully you can see a bit better. And the needle minder. There we go. Bella Butterfly. She's lovely. Um, I've just been doing all the skin. It's, um, she's... I'm doing the skin over one on this series and I really regret it because <laughs> it takes forever <laughs> to stitch all that skin over one. There's a lot of skin. Um, <laughs> imagine if I was doing like a full size mermaid or something. Holy cow. <laughs> um, I mean, it looks gorgeous. I don't regret the way it looks, but it takes a long time to stitch. What is going on there? See the, the stitches look kind of fat there. It's like there's a slub in the linen, but what I'm using is actually 32 count even weave. So I guess it's just bad stitching. <laughs> Probably just uneven thread. Um, or like, you know how DMC sort of becomes untwisted and I just didn't twist it enough. So yeah, there's Bella Butterfly. This is the second one in the series. Um, it's by Mirabilia. It's called the Bella Collection, I think. Um, so this is actually the third one in the series. This is the first one on chart number two. But this is the second one I'm stitching. Um, so this one doesn't have any water lily silks in it, but it does have beads and chronic. With a little bit of dust on it. There you go. So, um, I think I'll work on her until she's finished. And then I will go back to Sarah Brazier. Um, this is one of my Euro Whips pieces, so getting a finish on that will be excellent. 
Um, well, I'm just looking out for the dog's tail when I roll my chair around. I don't want to run her over. Okay, shall I go straight on to haul? I think I should. Um, I have haul. I also have a couple of Spanish samplers. I said I was going to talk about Spanish samplers and Mexican samplers, so I have um, a couple to show. And there's a couple in the haul too. Um, but let's start with the haul. Um, so the reason I have haul is because, as I mentioned, I've been looking after my mum's shop while she's away and she paid me for that, um, which I'm really grateful for because it's nice to have a bit of extra money to just guilt-free spend on stash and not be like, I should really spend it on bills, I should put it in savings. No, I worked hard and I'm going to spend it. So I did. I spent a lot of money. Um, see that? And that, yep, I spent a lot of money. Um, but it's stuff I've been, I've been building a wish list. This is from the Scarlet Letter and from the S Sampler. And I've been building a wish list on both of those websites for a long time. And I put quite a big dent in that wish list with these two orders. Um, I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got a lot of good stuff and I'm super happy. So let's just, let's just get started. So the Scarlet Letter, a flame, this is too blurry, is that better? A flame stitch sampler. And you guys might have seen this. I've seen somebody stitching this. I know that Courtney Blau has stitched this. I know that someone else has finished it. I think someone is stitching it right now. I'm sure I've seen it in someone's whip parade with recently. But it is gorgeous. I love this Bargello section here. This section here is all eyelets. <laughs> I think a lot of the alphabet is eyelets. Um, I love this, this beautiful floral part here. It's gorgeous. So this is an 18th century piece, signed and undated, probably made in Northern England or Scotland. Um, they said that the, the bottom half, because it was solidly stitched, might have been a practice for like a notebook, like a pocketbook or something, um, or a cushion, or a chair back, or a drapery. Um, yeah, and I, I got the kit. This is the only kit I got from the Scarlet Letter because I just wanted mainly charts. I got the kit because I intend to start this one soon. Um, it comes with 35 count linen sort of a natural color and a lot of silks <laughs> um, I love these silks this is um a Vera Soir Soir d'Alge um, I like this a bit better than the needlepoint inks so I love it I'm so excited um, I think when I do stitch it I might sub out this fabric um, because see the lightest color of silk there I'm assuming that's the light color here on top of all these little peaks I kind of want the fabric to be that colour, not this natural colour, because this natural colour is much darker than the silk. Um, so I might grab a cream. I don't know, haven't decided. Although maybe if I use that white colour on this fabric, that'll sort of jump out more because it's so light. Don't know. Anyway, there's that one. Um, that obviously is the one I'm planning to start first out of this Scarlet Letter stash haul. Um, but honestly, so many of these I like, I want to start them all. I really want to start this one. Um, a peacock, a unicorn, a badger. And someone is stitching this too. Might be Emily C, but she might be stitching like the leopard and the lion. Or There's a couple of other ones with animals on it from the Scarlet Letter that look like this. Um, this is the one I chose. I want all of them, but this is the one I chose. There you go. You can see that quite well, I think. Um, it's gorgeous. I love it. I love the birds. I love that peacock. I love the fish. You can see some more close-ups on the back. Got the swan, parrot. There's the peacock. That squirrel up there looks really odd. Um, yeah, gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, the design was inspired by an 18th century English canvas work, and it's got the tree of life in the center. Um, and it uses meticulous shading of embroidery threads. And oh, they say to stitch over two on 40 count. I was going to look into stitching over one on you know 28 count or something that's a possibility i really like how the water is actually satin stitch we can see here um so it's not all just cross stitch it says cross and counted satin are the only stitches required so love that i want to start that right away but i don't know if i will <laughs> oh yeah since i talked about starting everything in my last video i still haven't started everything <laughs> i think i really need to focus on um, meeting my year of whips goal, which is just two more finishes. Um, and I don't know if I'll finish this before I have new starts. I doubt that, but um, I'll. This has to be my focus. So I've got to finish this by May first. 
because I want to win that prize. The prize for finishing this by May 1st next year is to go in the drawing to win an actual antique sampler. I want it. <laughs> um, Miriam Brocklehurst. I saw the original of this when I was at the Fitzwilliam in Cambridge. And it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I love this section here. With this, the it's just four by two by two squares, or no, three by three squares of crosses, but it just looks so beautiful. The picture here doesn't do it justice. Wait a minute. The picture on the cover just doesn't do it justice. So let me try and find it in the book because it looks better in the book. Oh, there it is. Good. I was worried that was going to take a long time, but it didn't. So there it is. I'm trying to see what you can see. That's Miriam Brocklehurst. I love it. I love it. Um, what does it say? Miriam Brocklehurst is my name and with my hand I wrote the same when I was 11 years old. Uh, the working of it is worth gold. The year of our Lord, 1726. In the reign of King George, these lines are fixed. <laughs> this book came from the museum. I love it. I've, I've been looking through it over and over and over again. Look, but this is actually a close-up of that section on Miriam, Bro Miriam Brocklehurst. Love it. The other one I love the most from this museum actually is at the Assemblée, but it's a kit and I just, I got two kits already from the Assemblée and I couldn't justify another one, so can't find it. There it is. It's called Mary Eldrig. That's Mary Eldrig. I love this section here. Um, these guys with the weird red stockings. <laughs> yeah, that's Mary Eldrig. Um, I didn't get that one, but I love it. This book is fantastic, guys. Go and get it. Go and buy it. Go to the Fitzwilliam Museum. It's so good. I think Ingeborg and um, Stitch M just went. And so did Pink Stitcher. She just went too. Um, yeah. Where am I? Hey! Move. Move. Thank you. Alright. I don't have room for this book. Okay. Yeah, so Miriam Brocklehurst, 1726, as I said. Oh, here's the, the words here. I could have read it much more poetically because I wouldn't have to decipher the letters. Um, it's the transitional period of sample making from the 17th to the mid-18th centuries where the form gradually followed the function. No longer specifically a pattern record, samplers were begin beginning to become frameable art in their own right. Um, and this is only used as cross stitch, oh, double running stitch, eyelet stitch, counted satin, and florentine. So there we go. Love it. Don't know when I'll start that. ASAP. Maybe next year I'll just start all my Scarlet Lad charts. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, I was going to say one a month, but that won't be all of them. Uh, Dorcas Haynes. There it is. This one's also from the Fitzwilliam Museum. Let me try and find a better picture. I actually don't know where that is in this book, so I won't waste too much time on it. No, Anne Smith. I nearly got Anne Smith. I really wish I had. Anne Smith. I really wish I'd got it. I should have. Never mind. I'll just have to buy again. I'll have to buy more. Yeah, I can't... I'm not sure where Dorcas Haynes is. I remember seeing it. No. Okay, well, I don't want to waste your time forever. I could look in the index, couldn't I? Haynes, H A Y N E S one thirty. Nope. <laughs> okay. I don't know where Dorcas Haynes is. I will just show you the picture in the, on the top. There it is. It's very beautiful. Um, all those rows of flowers and so on. It says this is the most symmetrical balanced counter thread sample we've ever counted from, charted from. So 
It's the opposite of Sarah Brazier. Um, it's also one of the most satisfying, challenging, and beautiful samplers in the world. The wide... Oh, so the colours have been matched to the tones on the front of the sampler. If you don't know when they reproduce samplers, they can use the colours on the front, which have usually been sort of faded over time, or the colours on the back, which are usually more preserved and are usually brighter and more vivid and more representative of how it would have looked when, the, when it was stitched. Um, there's some, it's mainly just story here about Dorcas's life and her parentage and when she got married. Um, uh, the stitches in this piece are cross stitch, double running, countered satin stitch, queen stitch, detached buttonhole, closed herringbone, double diagonal, back stitch, eyelet, Parisian, Florentine, bullion knots and tent. So if you're wondering why I got this, it's because number one, it's beautiful and number two, I love all those stitches. Well, I, I love doing things with lots of stitches in, let's say that. That's lovely. That's another one that I saw the original of at the Fitzwilliam. So this one is MD1660, the Unicorn Sample. I don't know how well you can see that part at the top. No, it's not focused. I think it's not a very good photograph. That part at the top is all um, white work with cut sections. I think that's called a CC work, but I'm not sure. Um, yes, so band samplers of the 17th century exhibit the most astonishing variety of stitches found on samplers of any era, which is why it is known as the golden age of the sampler. Um, yes, cut work. The stitches include Italian and Montenegrin, cross, countered satin, French knit knots, double running, turkey work, I like turkey work, detached buttonhole and back stitch. Back stitch. And this one is at the Victorian Albert Museum apparently. When I went to London there were no samplers there at the Victorian Albert. Um, apparent, my mum went recently too and she said that they told her that they were on display elsewhere. So that's a shame. So I haven't seen this one in real life but it's beautiful. This is not one that I'm planning to start soon. This is more of a, an aspirational stitch. <laughs> um, but I like it and I'm glad to have it. This one was expensive, The Manifest. Uh, let me put it here so you can see it quite well, I think. The Manifest. Um, I love the sun and the moon, those weird clouds next to the sun. I hate the house. I hate stitching houses. I think I told you last time that's going to be a big house. I love the sky is just unblended bands of colour. There's a peacock on the wall. Um, and this garden here. I love that it's just... I think they were trying to draw the garden, but didn't really know how to use perspective, so they just whacked it up on the side. And this big floating, is that a thistle? Floating thistle. It's great. It's beautiful. If the flowers are bigger than the people, and it's great. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, designed after an early 18th century tent stitch picture. Picture. This expansive needlework scene depicts many episodes in the life of an affluent English family. Needlework pictures of this nature were likely drawn by professional artists with bits and pieces taken from contemporary engravings and embellished with the fashions of the day, with an increasing emphasis on naturalism. Luxurious plants appear more frequently in early to mid 18th century works as Arcadia, a love of all natural things, became all the rage. Um, yeah, so it's just cross stitch and it's big. Um, I don't have a stitch count. I don't have a stitch count, but, and it doesn't tell me how big it is. These are all sealed and I haven't opened any of them yet, but, uh, cause I, I don't know why I should open them. Then I can tell you more information. Um, yeah. When I start this, I'll tell you how big it's going to be. It's big. Look how much work is in it. It's big. I like that one. Um, this one is called Memento Mori. And I hope you can see that that is bright and colorful and beautiful. And it has this amazing um, Bargello section. In all your pride and self and glory, mind this same well, Memento Mori. And if you don't know, Memento Mori literally means remember that one day you'll die. Remember you'll die. Um, it's designed after an early 18th century sampler. Um, geometric shapes. It would have been practiced for things like a stool top or a cushion or a chair back. And it uses 
cross stitch, pity point, queen, eyelet, long arm cross and bar jello. And it's gorgeous. Memento Mori. I like Memento Mori sort of pieces. I like those ones that are inscriptions from gravestones or have verses about death. <laughs> I like them. Um, bird in Bow, a miniature American sampler. This is a small one, but I just like the bird. I like how he's just got all these colours in the wing and the tail. And that tree is very cool. Um, a fanciful, naive bit of American folk art. The original sampler from which this piece was reproduced was probably made about 1800. Um, two separate versions of the sampler graph have been supplied in this pack. One charted exactly like the original, requiring some freehand split and stem work, and the other version done entirely in counter cross stitch for the less adventurous. Yeah, so this, um, the branch, I don't think you'll be able to see on the video, this branch um, in the model is all split, split stitch and stem stitch. And it's only little, it's six and a quarter by eight and a half. So I like it. Um, this, you might have seen this one before, guys. Dorothy Warpole. Somebody just finished this on one of the sample groups and held it up and I just was I'm just uh, blown away by how gorgeous it is. Um, regular old verse, um, sorry, alphabet at the top. I love this colourful part here. As you can tell, I love Bargello. <laughs> and this beautiful floral part at the bottom. It's amazing. Um, the verse on it says... Oh, they haven't written it. Um... O great almighty God above, plant in my heart my fund of love, that I thy mercies may adore, and bless and praise thee evermore. Dorothy Walpole, age 18, 1774. Um, so this section here tells you a lot about her life and about the um, Pennsylvania Quaker. Um, and it uses Florentine, Cross, Petty Point, Islet, Queen, Herringbone, and Counted Satin. Counted Satin. Um, yeah, and I love it. Uh, and apparently Dorothy's two daughters also had samplers and the Scarlet Letter has charted both of those as well. So there'll be Mary and Elizabeth Walpole as well. Um, and I didn't look at those because I didn't realise that. But I will next time and I'll add them to my wish list and never stitch them. <laughs> I'm never going to stitch all of these guys. I just want, just want them for my collection. Um, I love this one too. This is The Fishing Lady. Beautiful little pastoral scene, lovely border, and the, a verse that's completely illegible to me. Oh, hang on. I can read it. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor thy tears wash out a word of it. It's a bit... Wow, harsh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, the fishing lady is a, a... It's the Scarlet Letter's own design. Um, created in collaboration with Terry Me Mink Mink Minka. Um, drawing on the needlework traditions of American and English um, over two centuries, the idyllic landscape and more naturalistic figures are taken from 18th century English canvas work. Um, and that technique travelled to America and manifested itself in the famous Fishing Lady and Boston Common pictures. Um, and you would have seen them. I'm 100 percent sure. I think Carriage House Sampling has a couple of Boston Common sort of looking ones and Little by Little has a fishing lady that I have and I love it. Um, the inspirations from these scenes came from engravings and other pinks prints popular in Europe and expressed itself here in some of America's finest and most famous cruel and canvas needleworks. Um, the flowers in the border were drawn from several antique samplers and the verse comes from Ruby, Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Cool, that's the fishing lady. Um, it's gonna be a long video, guys. 24 minutes already. Um, so the black griffin. You may have seen this. Someone got this recently, and I can't remember who. So apparently this came from. Um, yeah, on the first Sunday of September, there's a joust of the Saracen takes place in the historic city center of the city of Arezzo in Tuscany. And the various neighbourhoods of the town participate, proudly, proudly flying their respective banners as mounted armoured riders attempt to strike the shield of the wooden effigy of a Saracen warrior. Um, so this griffin was actually on one of the banners of the neighbourhoods 
Um, and we found the original cross stitch of the Griffo Nero, which means black griffin, at the town's famous antiques market in a small store specializing in tessuti antici, old textiles. Um, perhaps he was stitched to decorate the bodice of a medieval costume worn by a participant of the tournament, or maybe he was going to be fashioned into a purse or saddle, saddlebag. So, the verse on it says, well, it's in Latin, and I'm not going to read Latin, but the translation is, Lament man, flee, flee mortality. Why do you love fleeting things? All our dreams, death is menacing. So that's the Black Griffin. And I think that one actually might be fast-ish. There's a lot of black filling and white filling in the border, but I like it. I like it. It's cool and weird. And I like the weird verse. Um, yes, okay. Coraggio. You might have seen this. A few people have stitched this. I love it. This is the first one I saw um, that started me building my wish list on the Scarlet Letter. Um, it's an, an original design to the Scarlet Letter. It's not a historic sampler, but it comes from lots of parts of it all come from different um, samplers and old, they, they tell you what parts come from what old needlework books. Um, it's mainly Italian. The verse in the middle um, translates to how beautiful is youth, but it passes so quickly. Enjoy it while it lasts because tomorrow is uncertain. Um, yeah, I just, and she's called the Shameless Mermaid. And there she is. And we can all see why she's shameless. Her very masculine chest hanging out. Um, I love this beautiful, this, I don't know, it just all looks so frilly and detailed and lovely. And, and I love, obviously the Bargello, just put Bargello on a sample and I'll buy it. I nearly got the kit of this because I'd like to start this, but I didn't. I'm very good. No, I because I if I had I would have only got half as many charts as I got. Um, this is another original Scarlet Letter design. The wind blows. Let me see if I can get it a bit closer. So it's obviously inspired by 17th century English band samplers, um, and also 16th century Italian sculptural motifs. Um, the king and, queen, uh, king and Queen assume the stance of Adam and Eve under the Tree of Life with a scary sty above, the sun peeking through the clouds. Flanked by mazes and stylized lions, the main verse, written by King Henry, was first published in 1664. The wind blows out, the bubble dies, the spring entombed in autumn lies, the dew dries up, the star is shot, the flight is past and man forgot. And I don't know if you can see this tiny little line of text at the bottom, but this is my favourite part. What an enormous night, what a lonely earth. It's from a poem called The Widower's Tango. I, I just think it's pretty. It's really pretty. Nice colours and this sort of avenue. I, I agree, it's just Adam and Eve, but with the king and queen. It's cool. A lot of the historical samplers, English historical samplers, were so, like, um, all about King George or just they love their kings and queens. I think that's just a British thing. <laughs> in Australia, we don't like our prime minister. No one ever likes the prime minister. In fact, I can't even remember who the prime minister is at the moment because I think we're on our 10th prime minister in 10 years. I'm not going to get political. Okay, the four angels morning sampler. Morning samplers are another thing I like. You know, to go along with those memento moris and so on. Um... Yeah, this is another Scarlet Letter original design. Um, they talk a little bit about the history of morning samplers, but really the bit I like about this is the verse. Uh, the angels were all singing out of tune and hoarse with having little else to do except to wind up the sun and moon or curb a runaway young star or two. There are angels hovering around. And then at the bottom it says in memoriam, so on, forever in our hearts. But I just think it's pretty... And I hope I never have occasion to really stitch a morning sampler um, in memory of someone, but if I do, <laughs> there you go. No, I just, I like it. And here's the Mexican sampler. I did tell you I'd get one with my haul. I actually have more from the assembler, but this is the one I got from the Scarlet Letter. Um, it's pretty. This is called Maria Ignacia Oliveira, 1850. 
Um, and the, the information here is really good. It tells you that Mexican samplers obviously came from Spain. Um, many of the patterns and motifs used in this sampler might look familiar at first glance since they were brought to the New World from Europe by the teachers and needlewomen of the new Spanish colonies. What makes this type of sampler so elegant, uh, sorry, exciting and unique is its un unmistakable creative manipulation of cultural and ethnic themes. Building on the relatively stock patterns taught by the old world nuns to young Spanish women, a distinctively brilliant colour palette reflects native influences, gleaming golds, intense hues of violet, rose and red, almost neon greens. Chinese silk was one of the most widely traded commodities in New Spain via the port of Manila in the Philippines. So Mexican needlewomen had easy access to these fine materials, as well as the opportunity to study finished goods from the Orient, all of which invariably influenced their sampler work. So yeah, I love it. Really pretty. And I love that sort of context and history about Mexican samplers. Lovely. Um, that's all for the Scarlet Letter. Here's the assemble. You can see some pretty colours there. Um, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. The first one is Elizabeth Burton 1701. And it's a very long band sampler. The bit I love about this especially is this cool peacock at the bottom. Um, this, I don't know, I love it. The top part, I'm not, like, I probably wouldn't have got it for the top part. But everything from here down, I love. I love, I think the colours are good. Um, this was one of the students of Judah Hale, Judith Hale, um, Elizabeth Burton. Tells you a bit about the, the teachers and the schools in Ips Ipswich. Um, the stitches used are double running Algerian eye, cross stitch over one, two and three threads. Bullion, satin, chain, detached buttonholes, stand stitch and some freehand. Yep, freehand is the, the thing <laughs> out of all of those that is going to scare me. But we'll see. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see. It looks like these sections here are just solid satin stitch in like alter in you know short sections of each colour. It's really cool. Not solid satin stitch. Little um, um, like snakes of satin stitch. This is the one I'm most excited about from this haul. This is a darning sampler. It's called RVDB1794. And it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. I've always wanted to do a darning sampler. Um, a great little surface darning sampler from the Netherlands. Uh, it's But it's in the Metropolitan Museum of New York. So it's gorgeous. I've always wanted to do it. Darning samplers were patterns that girls used to learn to um, mend clothing and socks and stuff when they broke, when they tore or ripped. So it's just weaving in and out. You put your needle up at the bottom, just go under and over certain amounts of threads and it makes these beautiful patterns. So, and I got the kit for this. Um, there are 13 colours of silk. Um, the assembler always just sticks their silk over the top like that and tells you that they're in number order as they are in the chart. <laughs> um, again, I might sub out this linen. It's sort of a natural colour as well, but I might go for like a cream looking colour like it is here. Don't know, haven't decided, might not. I love this. I might start this pretty soon. This is probably, out of everything I'm showing you today, the most likely thing to be started soon. I like it. Um, this is gorgeous. It's called MSD and it's a German sampler. It's called the Nure a Nuremberg sampler. 1735. Um, this one's interesting, it tells you about some of the symbolism. It says that this peacock, look at that huge tail. Um, the peacock is a symbol of immortality, resurrection and eternal life. The rooster stands for watchfulness and is also a symbol of the resur- or, or calls the resurrection of Jesus. The dog is a symbol for faithfulness. The parrot is a symbol for the Virgin Mary. <laughs> Who knew that all these samplers were so religious? Um, yeah, I just think they're beautiful. There are a bunch of stitches in here too. I just love this section. I love it. It says, um, mainly flame stitch and rice stitch. Love that. Love that. You can tell I like these German spot samplers, right? This, this was an expensive one. It's a fat one. Um, it's called German spot sampler. <laughs> and again, I love these sections here. 
um, there's a few different stitches there. I really, I think these flowers here are beautiful. Don't care so much for the lady at the top, but that parrot is going to be pretty remarkable. Um, amazing. Again, this is also from around Nuremberg, it says. The top two thirds of the sampler is worked entirely in tent or continental tent over one thread. Um, the bottom third is made up of various geometric patterns using a variety of stitches such as tent, cross stitch, rice stitch, Roman stitch, queen stitch, satin stitch, eyelet stitch, and Hungarian stitch. Yeah, yeah, Nuremberg. Um, the geometric motifs are often seen on samplers from around Nuremberg, as well as other samplers from South Germany. That, Germany. They would have been used on various household items such as slippers, bags, wallets, and upholstery. I'd love to have like a pair of slippers <laughs> with some of these on. Or have the, my dining room chairs embroidered all like that. Amazing, right? Okay. This is another Nuremberg German sampler. Um, here we go. It's called IVCF. Circa 1700? Yes, yeah, 1700. And you can probably sense a theme here. I love these blocks of geometric patterns. Beautiful. It's very bright colours. Um, again, all these patterns would have been used on upholstery, small bags, shoes, etc. I just think it's gorgeous. Love it. And this one's a bit smaller than the other ones. <laughs> Which I appreciate <laughs> at this point of my stitching life where I have so much stash and only so many years to live. <laughs> um, this one is Soledad Villalobos, circa 1830. I don't know if I said that right. Soledad Villalobos. And I think this one is super cool. I love this. I think this section here is Aztec stitch. Or this section. Don't know which one. Um, obviously, this is Mexican. Um, Mexican samplers are usually worked in a reversible manner. That is, the threads were finished on the front. So you bring your needle up on the front of the work and weave it under what you've already stitched on the front. Mm. Um, this sampler is no different. The cross stitch is worked so that, so that all that is visible on the back are short vertical stitches. So the back is just, you know, the little lines. Um, long armed crosses used as a double running satin cut work with wrapping, dove size and Aztec stitch. Aztec stitch can form different patterns depending on how the colours are worked and the direction they're stitched in. So, um, maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. Maybe they're both the same. I think they might be both the same. Okay, anyway, love it, gorgeous, beautiful colours. I might need to do a bit more practice before I actually hit this though. The, um, because of the reversible element, um, Nicola Parkman is doing a stitch along in a Facebook group and via video of the MH, let me go and get it, MH, my beloved's gift sampler. which I have and this sampler is also all reversible so you can see one side is the back and one side is the front. Um, this is a good example this faded side is the front see the blue is so much more faded than on the back um, because of the light falling on it has actually faded it. So um, Nicola Parkman is doing a stitch along to help us all with the reversible elements and getting the stitches right and so on. I wasn't going to um, kit up and start stitching along but now I'm thinking maybe I should because they're skills things are needlework skills <laughs> learning to be reversible and so on and it would be really good um, I don't need another whip but it would be really good so I might I need a hell big piece of fabric though I think um, even on 46 count this is 40 inches long <laughs> so I need to get a big piece of fabric I might I don't know anyway that's not that's that's old haul. That's old news. I've still got one more assemble kit to show you. This one's a kit. Check out those colours. It has beads in it and sequins. What? Sequins, yes. And it's another Mexican sampler. For Maria Antoni. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is the um this is the reason I made this order. Basically, this was the first thing I put on my wish list and went, I'm gonna have to fill up a cart from this store, from the assembler. Um, it's Mexican, it has some wonderful flame stitch patterns as well as small beadwork area. Um, yeah, apparently beadwork areas are seen more often on Mexican samplers. 
I believe this particular sampler was made in a convent school. There are similarities between Mexican and Spanish samplers, and the nuns that taught in these schools came from Spain and brought their passions with them. <laughs> There's a grammatical mistake there. Um, and it was 1835. Flame stitch, long iron cross, reversible cross, sashen, French knot, other cross variations, and double running stitch. So, how's that? Um, the reason I got this as a kit is because it's only available as a kit, otherwise I would have got a charm. But since it's a kit, this will probably be the first Spanish slash Mexican sampler I start. Um, I said I'd show you some other ones. I showed you this one last week. Spanish sampler. Gorgeous. Um, this one I have in my stash is Queenstown Sampler Designs Mexican Garden, circa 1860. Oops, I'm covering it up, so there we go. It's just a nice little snippet. Um, Teresa Vinette, Shakespeare's Peddler, Kitten Stitcher, aka, aka. Um, she has one also, a Spanish mystery sampler, and it's gorgeous, and I'm coveting it, and it will come to me pretty soon I'm sure. I will not be able to resist too much longer. This one isn't traditional at all. In fact I don't know if it's even meant to be Spanish or Mexican but it looks that way to me. It's heartstring sampler, Rachel Holmes. And now that we've seen all the other Spanish samplers and Mexicans, they're mostly Mexican, sorry. Now that we've seen the other ones I think we can see the inspiration in this one. Um, it's not an old sampler, it's an original design but think we can see the inspiration from those old Spanish and Mexican samples and I love this I would love to start this but I borrowed this from my mum's stash borrowed took no thanks mum <laughs> um yeah beautiful and that's it that's all I have <laughs> um just a small pile of samplers here and here and here just a few just a little bit of formal um, it kind of does make all the hard work I've been doing worth it because it's been hard work <sighs> but this is this does make me happy <laughs> so it feels worth it and mum if you have any more work to do just let me know <laughs> okay um that's all I have to show you I'm going to finish this I'm going to dream about starting that darning sampler and Soledad Villa no Maria Antoni um <laughs> My dog is snoring. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Bye.